Okay, hello. I'm Chris. I come from Malta, and for the past couple of years, I've been working on an ebook reader for iOS called Marvin. And what I'll be doing during this session, I'll be giving a bit of a background about what Marvin is all about and what was my motivation for creating yet another ebook reader. Then I'll show you a small selection of cool features in Marvin and tell you a bit how people are using them. And then I'll finish off by showing you some ideas that I'm working on right now. So um, this is what started it all for me. Um, I suppose uh, that the seed of the idea that eventually grew to become Marvin was planted around the time I decided to leave paper books behind for an ebook only library. And this switch was particularly, particularly meaningful for me because it fit in really well with this idea that I have that people are naturally curious about the media they consume. So if you like music and you buy a CD and it has a beautiful cover, you want to learn more about the artists who drew that cover. If you enjoy movies and you watch a great one, you want to follow it up by checking out its making of. When you, whenever I'm reading a book, I want to learn more about the author. And if I come across an interesting character, I want to tap on that character and see a photo of that character. I want to see a biography of that character. Now, um, my background is in computer science, specifically in a field called machine learning. So I'm really excited about this idea of having these really powerful computers in my pocket that I can use to help me learn more and discover more about these things I enjoy so much. So what I decided to do, and this was around four years ago, was to build this tool that behaved like a black box. And what this black box did was it took an ebook as an input. It broke it down into little bits and pieces, so it find it would find things like the names of characters, events, important dates, places in a book. And then it would use all of that information to run intelligent searches on the internet and bring back things that were relevant to those objects. So it would find the reviews, articles, photos, biographies, video, and then it would use all of, that, all of that information to synthesize a new enhanced version of the original book for me that then I can take away and drop into my favorite ebook reader, including that on an e-ink device. Um, now, this project worked really well, and the results were really accurate. However, there was a bit of a user experience problem going on here, because you know how in ebooks, whenever you have text that you can tap on, that text is usually a link. So what was happening was that on any given page, you would be seeing things like 10, 20, 30 different links, so the whole book started looking a bit too busy. And also, um, you know how footnotes work in most EPUBs. Whenever you tapped on one of these things, you'd be teleported to some other place in a book, and then you'd have to find your way back, and there was this cross-referencing thing that was going on all the time that broke your flow while you were reading. So this thing worked, but at the time, um, I didn't feel like it could exist as a standalone app. It needed something else, it needed something more. And as luck would have it, that something more started becoming a bit more obvious to me when I decided to try out this experiment where I would move a few books out of my e-ink device onto this new shiny toy I had called the iPad. Because at the time, I was a bit of a 100% e-ink person only. So what happened was I was shopping around for what was going to be my next e-book reader, and I was trying out different apps, and I was subscribing to forums to see what other people were saying about these e-book readers. And what I was finding out was that many people were really excited about some features that these ebook readers had. So everyone sort of liked the idea of having a bookstore built into an ebook reader, and everyone was wowed by these super cool page turn animations that these new ebook readers had. But at the same time, people were wondering why some ebook readers lacked some basic functionality, like letting them change fonts. Some people were wondering, but why do certain ebook readers insist on having these really wide margins on the sides? of text when it is so obviously a problem if you're reading on a phone. People were asking for things like one tap Dropbox access. So um, what was happening was that over time, I was building this wish list of things that I wanted to see in an ebook reader. And this wish list was all the time being augmented with all of these ideas that other people were, were suggesting. So on the one hand, I ended up with this black box thing that looked promising. And on the other hand, I had this list of things that I thought would make for a great ebook reader. And, uh, of course, at some point, I must have said, you know, I might want to bring these two things together and do something about it, see what happens. And the result was Marvin. Marvin was released as an iOS app in November of 2012. During a period of under a year and a half, Marvin got um, just over, I think, 450 new features and enhancements. And I'm really proud to say that a good chunk of those features and enhancements were ideas that came directly from people in the ebook reading community. In fact, one of the most important things to happen to Marvin was that during the summer of last year, Marvin got permanent homes on Mobile Read and on GitHub. 
and this combination of mobile read and GitHub make for a very beautiful place where people are getting together, they are discussing new ideas about what ebook, what ebook readers should have, they are making suggestions for new features, talking about problems they are having, and this pool of problems, ideas, and features make for an incredibly deep well from where I draw inspiration about what's going to happen next in Marvin. The last update for Marvin has been announced just a couple of days ago. Um, probably I'll just hit the button later on today. Um, I didn't want to do it if something goes wrong over here, so I just wait for all of this to be over. Um, there's a nice set of things going on in this update, so um, there are many more refinements, there are many more advanced library management tools. Now we can do things like create your books, but I think that the headlining feature in this update is that for the first time, and this is very important for many people who use Marvin, is that for the very first time, Marvin has been localized into a language other than English. So very soon, Marvin is going to be available in German as well. And of course, I'm going to continue this process of translating Marvin into as many languages as possible. So that was a brief history of Marvin, if you like. What I'll do now is I'll just move on and show you a few features in Marvin that I think are real nice and tell you a bit how people are using them. And so. Okay, so since the early days, it was becoming increasingly apparent that people who are using Marvin were also incredibly meticulous about the way they wanted to manage their ebook libraries. And it seemed like everyone was using this tool called Calibre. Now, I'm pretty sure that many of you are already familiar with what Calibre is all about. Um, if you're not, Calibre is this program that runs on your computer. And the central component, if you like, is this um, powerful ebook, ebook library manager. So what happened was that towards the beginning of last year, I've been incredibly lucky, and I got to know this great guy called Greg Riker. And amongst the many things that Greg does is he's a brilliant Calibre plugin developer. That means he knows how to extend the behavior of Calibre and make it do pretty much whatever he wants. And what we decided to do was, that in addition to Marvin's own powerful library management tools, we decided to build a system called Marvin XD, where XD stands for Extended Driver, that lets people manage just about any aspect of um, their ebook libraries on a mobile device, but do it from the comfort of their desk. So you can do things like rate your books, organize them into bookshelves and collections, transfer books to and from your device. Um, you can correct metadata if there's anything that needs correcting. Um, one of the really nice things you can do with this is you can browse any notes or highlights or any other annotations you have on a book live on the device. So, for instance, you are studying, you'd usually find yourself taking down lots of highlights and notes, and at some point in time, if you want to use them, you would have to go through some process where you would export your notes, move them over to your computer, import them, maybe go through some cloud thing. What you can do over here, you can see all of your notes and anything that you've ever collected in a book nicely aggregated in one place. So you can copy your things, paste them into your word processor, format everything nicely, and finish off your work. One of the things we also decided to do was to make the core technology that makes all of this happen. We decided to make that open and public and available to everyone. So now anyone else who builds other ebook readers or other ebook systems that would like to communicate with either Marvin or with Calibre itself, you know, they can check out our documentation. We documented everything properly and they can hit the ground running. Next up is this idea of custom commands, and this is a favorite of mine. You know how in mobile apps there is this idea that whenever you tap on text, you will see this menu that will let you perform some kind of command. So maybe you can copy text, paste it, look up words in a dictionary. Um, what you're seeing over here is pretty much the default menu you would see in Marvin for iPad. The version for iPhone is uh, there are um, just a few items that are not shown by default. What you can do over here is you can completely customize this menu. And by customize, I do not mean rearranging items or showing or hiding items. What I mean is that you can actually create your own commands that would perform any command and action that you would like to have performed on your text. Um, Marvin comes with a preset library of around 30 different commands, but they just exist as presets to help people get started. You can actually create your own. Um, what I'll do over here is I'll just show you three or four examples so that you'll get a bit of an idea about what this thing is all about. So maybe I'm reading a book with a friend and we're turning this book into the script for a movie. So one of the things that we find ourselves doing all the time is sending bits and pieces of text to each other from the book to discuss and maybe attach a note of sorts. So what you can do in Marvin is that you can create this command and associate that command with a real person. Then you can link the contact details of that person to that command. And now all of a sudden, whenever I select text, I will see a button called Chris, for instance, and then one tap of an email will go, or possibly with a note, to that person. So usually the workflow would usually involve, you know, select the text, copy it, paste it somewhere, find an email address, send the email, and usually be, you would be thrown out of your ebook reader, right? And if you're doing that often enough, it starts becoming very boring. 
there are other shortcuts types of commands in Marvin. So for instance, whenever I highlight text in Marvin, I never find myself highlighting individual words. In most cases, I highlight entire sentences. So again, that usually means I have to tap on the first word, drag all the way to the end, make sure I'm aiming properly. What you can have here is you can create this special command that lets you tap on any word in a sentence, and Marvin will do all of the hard work of expanding that selection to the entire sentence and highlight everything in one go. There are many, many, many things that you can do with this. Marvin is also able to extend itself and use the services of other apps on your iPhone and on your iPad. So maybe you have this favorite dictionary app or maybe you have this favorite translation app that you use all the time. Um, so maybe I'm reading a book that became a, became a movie and I come across a character and I'm wondering who the actor is. I can actually create a command that links to the real IMDb app, not the website, to the entire IMDb app. And so I can hit on, on my character, hit the IMDb button, and the whole IMDb app will launch. And I'll see photos of the actor who played that character. I can see a biography. I can also discover who the director of the movie was. And I can also check out a, a trailer for the movie. Marvin, is all, um, apart from being able to communicate with other apps installed on your device, you can also create commands that make use of other web services. So maybe you have this favorite mapping app. So maybe you like using Google Maps. So you can create a command that would associate Marvin with Google Maps. So now when you come across a place and you're wondering what that place is all about, you can just hit on the Maps button and you see that place on a map. Or maybe you can connect to your favorite photo service. So you come across a character, you tap on the Photos button, and you will see a nice photo album with all, of the character, with all the photos of a character, for instance. And in reality, the only thing that you need to know to be able to create these types of commands is a basic understanding of how internet addresses work. And if you can do that, you can create your own commands and perform any action you want using any web services or other apps installed on your device. Many people do, and they share them around on Facebook and on Twitter. And every now and then, some commands are now to be really cool, and I add them to as presets in Marvin for other people to use. So that's custom commands. Next up is this idea of smart collections. Um, many book readers have got this idea um, that of organizing books into bookshelves and collections, so we can create a science fiction collection and drop all of your sci-fi books in there. In Marvin, of course, you can do that, but there is also this idea of smart collections where you can group books. They are sort of auto collections like smart mailboxes, like smart mailboxes where you would group books based on some common characteristic. So maybe I've finished reading a really long book and I want my next one to be a bit of a shorter read. So what I can do is ask Marvin, just show me books that have a fewer than 50,000 words, for instance. There's a smart collection for that. There are something like 20 smart collections. I'm adding more of those as I go along. So there are smart collections for viewing books according to their flagging status. You can drill them by series, by author, by subjects, by tags, by rating. Um, there are some other management type of smart collections, like the uncollected smart collection that would show you all the books that you've never organized into, into any other collection. Again, people who use Marvin are very fastidious about the way they want to manage their ebook libraries. And there's also this My Reading List smart collection that is a queue of books that I know I want to read next. So if maybe I have 100 books in my library, but I know that these five I really need to check out soon, I would drop those into my reading list um, to follow them up. For over a year, Marvin has had this vocabulary building tool. So whenever you look up a word in a dictionary, Marvin builds a vocabulary for you. And that was becoming a bit more common in other ebook readers. Um, vocabularies in Marvin are built on a per book basis or on a global basis. So you could ask Marvin to show you all the words that you've learned while you were reading a book or all the words that you've le learned across all the books in your library. And you'd also see like, um, this is, uh, I've learned this book for, I've learned this word for the first time in this book, for example. There are some extra tools in Marvin's vocabulary browser. So maybe I'm reading a book in English and English isn't my native language. So one of the things that I would do is look up the word in my own language. So there are translation tools built into the vocabulary browser. And I can also branch out and run internet define type searches for those words in my vocabulary. Of course, just about like anything that you collect in Marvin, the vocab um, your vocabulary is exportable, and in many cases, the vocabulary is exportable as HTML files, so people can view them on any computer or on any platform and drop them into any word processor if they want to modify them or use them. But one of the nice things that you can do in the case of vocabulary is um, the vocabulary is also exportable in a machine-readable format called CSV. If anyone has used word processors, maybe you've used Excel, you'll be familiar with what CSV is all about. And this was actually a feature request, was a very interesting one. Um, the gentleman who made this feature request actually wanted to use the words, because CSV is nice because you can program it and script it and do fancy things with it. 
And what the gentleman wanted was um, to use the words that he was learning while he was reading to build word learning games for his children. So that was really nice. Deep view is the implementation of that black box idea that I was talking to you earlier on. What happens effectively here is that when you open a book for the first time and you try and access enhanced content in a book, Marvin will say, hey, would you like me to quickly read through the book and try and find all the cool things that are going on? And if you say yes, Marvin will scan that book, it will analyze it. Um, it will build an index of all the things that are interesting in the book, so it will find names, acronyms, dates, events, important places that, that are being mentioned in the book. And once an index is built, you can start doing a lot of cool things with it. So there are some basic things like, I haven't been reading for a couple of days, so I just tap on a name to see the first occurrences of that name in a book to remind me who the character is or what a place was all, or what an event was all about. But then I can also do things like attach notes to names, I can flag them, I can organize my index by, date of appear, by order of appearance and by importance in the book. I can drill into names to find photos, to find Wikipedia articles, to find biographies about characters. Um, what else? There's also this articles panel, and what the article panels, articles panel has, over here you have these tools that help you perform guided searches on the internet to find more information about the books you are reading and about the author. So this is the place where you would find out whether a book you are reading became a TV series or whether it became a movie. And what's nice over here is that any web content that you see in Marvin is presented in a built-in web browser. Usually some apps have got this select some text to Wikipedia and you're thrown out of your ebook reader into another web browser and I find that to be a bit jarring. So what happens over here is that any web content is shown in a web browser built into the app and what is really nice about this is that any web content that you find, you can actually pin it into a book. So later on you could ask Marvin, just please export a list of all the articles that I've ever collected about this book. And of course there are some, a lot of nice applications for this, whether I'm studying or researching a book for whatever reason. Marvin is also capable of creating summaries of your books, and summaries in Marvin are named-based. So you could just pick the top two lead characters in a book and say, create a summary based on these characters in the book, or create a summary based on these events in a book, or create a summary based on these places being mentioned in a book. And creating a summary usually takes a couple of seconds in Marvin, and what's really nice is that once Marvin finishes creating a summary for you, it doesn't just present you with a block of text saying, hey, this is your summary. Marvin actually creates a brand new ebook for you, and adds it to your library. So now back in your library, you'd have your main book, and you'd have different versions of the same book. So you could have a version that is a summary based on this character, a version that is based on these events, on these dates, whatever. And again, there are some obvious scholarly and research uses for this, but actually one of the nicest bits of feedback I had got about summaries is that authors themselves are using this feature, so when they have a draft, when they have, a, they have a first draft of their book, they are running a summary based on some characters so that they can study the progression of a character in a book to see whether everything is making sense and everything is fitting in, or maybe a character and an event to see how things are interacting. So that's quite nice. This is really a very, very small feature, but it's one that I'm really proud of, and it sort of betrays my background as coming from e-ink. You've probably noticed that whenever anyone is using a phone or a tablet or a laptop at night, you'll see that harsh blue-white glow in their face that fills their eyes. So in addition to being able to control the brightness of the screen, Marvin, you can also calibrate the warmth and the tint of the screen. And you know, it's something really small, but it goes a very, very long way to minimize that harshness when you are reading at night for a bit of a more e-ink-like experience. You remember when tablets started becoming popular as e-book readers, everyone said, you know, they'll never look as comfortable and as good as e-ink devices, especially, you know, when you're reading at night because it's backlit and stuff like that. This is sort of an attempt to make this a bit better. This, the idea of hidden books, is one of the very first feature requests I had gotten Marvin. And the idea behind this is that many people share one single tablet across people in the family. And what this person wanted was to create a small corner in, in, his, uh, in his library to keep a few books to himself. So what happens over here is that you would set up a password in Marvin, and after that password is set up, you can start selecting books, and you can say, you know, these books, I just want to keep them for myself, and they would never appear on the home screen, they would never appear in the library, unless you unlock it. So this is like a step one towards parental controls in Marvin. Right now I'm experimenting a bit with having different user profiles, so maybe I could you could have one iPad, and I have a version of my library for myself, one for the children, you know, and you could have different libraries within the same app depending on who's using it. 
Okay, this is the last feature I'll be showing you over here. Um, the idea of multiple type, different types of bookmarks. Of course, in Marvin, you can create you can create a bookmark a page, but what you have over here is also this advanced setting where you can turn on different types of bookmarks. And in Marvin, you have three different types of bookmarks, so they come in the red, blue, and green flavor. And uh, there are many uses for this. So maybe I'm reading an engineering textbook and I want to have a red bookmark to mean that this is a normal bookmark on a page. I want to have a green bookmark to mean that there is this really important algorithm or there is really this really important process going on. And then I want, would want to have a green bookmark to mark that there is this really important diagram over here. And since in Marvin's table of contents browser, Marvin actually makes a distinction between these different types of bookmarks, it's very easy to jump around between these important diagrams or these important bits and pieces of text because Marvin makes a distinction. And um, coming up in the very, very next update, which might be tonight, um, you'll also be able to attach notes to bookmarks. So in pretty much the same way you can attach a note to a passage by attaching a note to a highlight, you can also annotate entire pages. And again, one of the design principles is Mar in Marvin is that anything that you collect in Marvin is exportable in open formats that you can read on any computer or on any device. So you'll be able to export those as well. So that was a small selection of features. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are literally hundreds of more, but maybe later on we can get together and I can show you a nice demo on, the, on a real device. So next up are some ideas, some things that I'm working on right now. Um, there are some features that I refer to as the core features, and these are features that are mostly coming as feature requests on GitHub, on mobile read, by email. So uh, right now, sort of close to the top of the list is uh, vertical scrolling. Vertical scrolling is something that people, that's becoming very, very popular, and it's more or less my top feature request at the moment. Um, improvements to uh, synchronization across devices. Right now, Marvin does things like synchronize your reading location across devices, but I want to extend that to include many more things like synchronizing deep view content, any articles that I'm col collecting and stuff like that. Localization is becoming very relevant. Over 50% of the people who use Marvin come are not native English speaking. So uh, right now on my list, I've got French, Spanish, and Russian, so hopefully that's going to happen soon. I've mentioned this before, everything in Marvin is exportable, so you can export lists of names, a list of characters, all of your bookmarks, all of your highlights. What I would like to have is book reports is a bit of a funny name. I must come up with something that sounds a bit better. Um, but basically, it's this idea of one monolithic file where you would export anything that you ever collected about a book. And maybe you could keep that file separately in your main ebook library, maybe on your computer that would contain all of the research that you've ever made and all of the cool stuff that you've found that's related to a book. I'm also working on this idea that again is temporarily called the Picture Hub, so uh, this would be a place where I would be able to browse all of the images that exist in a book. I like doing this if I'm reading biographies, and I suppose that is the reason why a lot of biographies have all of their pictures next to each other in an appendix, because people like, like browsing through pictures in their books. So effectively what this would do is it would show you all of the images that exist in a book next to each other, so I can browse through all of the images in a book. Um, this is also useful if I want to browse through medical textbooks. Maybe I want to browse through them as uh, an atlas of images. Of course, you'd be able to annotate and add notes to images. So all of those things would be exportable as well. And I'm also working on some deep view flavor in here because uh, I want to extend this by allowing Marvin to be able to intelligently search on the internet to find other photos and other pictures that might be relevant to the book and add them over here. So uh, whenever I'm reading a book that is uh, non-fiction, so maybe I'm reading a history book, well, even if it's fiction, maybe if it's a book that became a movie or a book that's the novelization of a movie, one of the things I really enjoy doing before I start reading the book, if I know it exists, is I usually look up photos of the main characters in a book because then I can associate a face with the names and it helps me immerse myself a bit more in the story. I'm also working on this idea of library indices, and this idea is sort of inspired by this fascination I have that whenever I visit friends, I usually spend something like half an hour staring at their bookshelves and libraries and quizzing them and asking them questions about the books they are reading. I would like to do that for ebooks as well. So I could be talking to a friend and we're talking about books, and I say, you know what, just send me an index of the books in your library. And I would receive an index of their books in my library, so I'd have things like the names of the books, the, the authors, the description, maybe some notes that they've added themselves to their books, and maybe the covers, of course not the books themselves. And then I would be able to browse those indices in my, on my, in my app, 
just as if I were browsing my own library. And I would have some special tools in there that would help me find reviews about, of those books, to help me learn more about the author, just to make sure, just to help me see whether it's going to be a book that I will enjoy. And of course, if I enjoy it, I can also add it to a wish list so that later on I could ask Marvin, just show me a list of all, all of these books in my wish list so that then I'll go and start shopping. Okay, um, one last thing that I'm working on is this idea of integrating Marvin with some hardware devices. What you're seeing over here on the left, that's a Bluetooth foot pedal. On the right, you've got a Bluetooth keychain dongle. And, uh, well, there is an accessibility and comfort angle over here. So one of the things I can do with that Bluetooth foot pedal is I can prop my iPad on a stand, right? And I can read and control an entire book without using my hands, or in the case of, a, of the dongle, using minimal hand gestures. In the case of the dongle, I can also do fancy things like program those buttons. So maybe I could use left and right to move forwards or backwards in a page, up and down to increase the brightness or take me to the beginning or end of chapters. Maybe hit the thing in the middle to create a bookmark or switch modes. Okay, um, unfortunately, it's a bit hard from a development perspective. I've got a working prototype because unfortunately, the way this thing would appear to developers, these devices appear as keyboards out of all things. They would appear to people who are trying to program them as Bluetooth keyboards. And they would send, like, the left pedal would send an A key, for example. So it's a bit weird dealing with it, with it. But I think it's something that's really important to have. So that's it.